Tony from Japan. I'll show you around in just a little bit. Uh, I know it's going to take a couple of seconds for myself to show here so I know that I'm actually live. Uh, we get some comments going. Uh, you guys know the the uh, the steps here. What we always usually do is I like to say what's going on and also if you guys can type in and let me know how the audio is. Audio, audio, audio check and visual check. Let me know how everything's going so I know. Type in the chat um, because it does take a, probably about 30 seconds to a minute before I start to see people watching and before I get some feedback. So that's why the, the, you know, the getting started usually takes uh, a couple of minutes. Awesome. So we got, there we go. Now it's starting to come on here. Tony, Troy from Michigan. First timer. Sounds good. Excellent. Thanks for letting me know. The audio is good. Um, what's up? Finally made it. Doug, Doug Flutie. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Don't mind me. I dropped out of high school and college, so I'm not the best uh, pronoun pronouncer. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, we'll give it a couple of minutes for the people to start getting on the call here. Yep, yep, Flutie. Is that how you say it, Flutie? That's an interesting last name. Um, yeah, we'll give it a couple of minutes. So everybody getting on right now, if you could just type in um, where you're from, where you're watching, okay, where you're coming in from. If this is your first time, second time, third time. And if you hear me and the audio is okay, I'm streaming at 420p today. I decided to just up it up a notch a little bit uh, to see if we get some clearer uh, video here. Because we're, you know, it's a little different with live. It's not like I'm shooting um, HD video here, you know. If I shot, if I went with hype HD, it would be a little bit choppy, I think. Uh, nickname. Doug says the nickname. Joe, Louisiana, first time. A lot of first timers on here today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so if you guys, what's up? Damn, Mega, Mega is just straight right into right into the Q&A. Where's the foreplay, brother? <laughs> Anthony, yo, what's up? What's going on, Peter? Mega, Joe, sound, sound is 4x4. Four four. Excellent, 4x4. Four four. Doug from Atlanta, first time. I've watched every stream, though. Good audio. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Mega's laughing. <laughs> so let me just give you a quick what's been going on, where I'm at. It's bright here. You're probably like, what the heck? So I actually flew out to Japan, and I just got in last night, um, 7 o'clock p.m. Japan time. Literally from door to door takes about 22 hours in traveling. Uh, you know, two hour layaway at DFW from Dallas. Um, you know, you got to get to the airport two hours ahead of time. I was there three hours ahead of time. And then you got the 13 hour flight from Japan, no, from Dallas to Narita, to Tokyo. And then at Tokyo, I had a four hour wait because there's only a small plane. I, I had to fly north a couple of hours to go to a place called Niigata, Japan. It's north uh, west of Tokyo. So I had to, you know, wait a four-hour delay and then another hour plane ride from there to the little hometown up there in Niigata. So I, 22 hours of, of travel. Just got in late last night. Um, I got to see my babies. They're doing well. Uh, my, my older girl, Maya, was in the hospital. She had pneumonia, so she's still in the hospital. I just went to go see her this morning. Uh, then I came back because I wanted to do a quick buy and sell with you guys. You know, I try to stay on schedule here. And um, so after this, I got a, some some online work I got to do. And then I got to go back to the hospital and spend some time with her there. She's getting out tomorrow, thank God. She's doing good. She's doing good. She just caught pneumonia and it just got really bad in her cough. And so she's in the hospital. She's she's fine, though. And uh, my little baby girl is doing well as well. So that's kind of what's been happening. Let me show you around. Uh, quickly and then we'll get into the, the Q&A and I want to talk to you about a couple of things about negotiation uh, So here is my the view here. I'm actually in the city. It's 10 o'clock 10 almost 10 10 in the morning, right? Um, I know it's 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern for you guys This is what it looks like outside beautiful day today beautiful day 
and um, I'm in my little apartment here. It's it's tight. Japan is very tight. Um, you know the the buildings, the living style, everything, the living quarters. It's not like living in Texas or anywhere else. So it's basically you know this is our bedroom kind of. I got TV, a little couch here. Uh, there's a little kitchen in the back over there. It's dirty because we're just getting organized and moving, and I'm working from my little little desk over here right now. So that's how it looks in here. Um, awesome, awesome. All right, everybody with me so far? Type in the chat. Say, yeah, I'm with you, Tony. Everything's good. I hear you. And I want to kind of talk to you about, uh, we're going to get into this maybe 10 minutes, just talk to you about uh, developing your magical persona. Okay, great, 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 great. So now, you know, you know, my brother always says, you know, in life, we are, we are in the people business. Okay, now I want you to think about this uh, for a moment. Okay, and some people, you know, when they get into flipping cars to profit, they're kind of contemplating, they're like, you know, I, don't, I, I want to do it, but I'm not a salesman. You know, that's just the wrong mindset to get started. Okay, because everybody's a salesman. We are in the people business, no matter if we like it or we don't like it. Okay, you could say I'm an introvert, right? But are you going to make excuses or are you going to make things happen, right? If you want to make money, you got to put your introvertness aside. You got to put I'm not a salesman aside and get shit done. All right, you got to stop being a little B. Stop being a little bitch and get things done. All right, and it comes down to just being a people person and just being friendly, okay? And that is, you know, in my in my F1 Auto Cash Formula book, in the main book that I I, I give a little, uh, I I talk about a a little story in there um, about a dog. You know, say you go to your friend's house. It's an analogy. You go to your friend's house and. He has like this pit bull Rottweiler like barking at you through the gate. And you're like, whoa, man, what's going on? You know, what's up, Justin? What's going on? You trying to hold the gate? This is exactly what happened. A friend of mine came over to my house once and I had a German Shepherd. And my German Shepherd was like, woo, 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 And like he had to hold the front door, the gate shut because he was afraid that, the, that my dog was going to go leap at him. Right? So it's the same thing when you come out to our people. You know, when you talk to people, right, when when people talk to you, you're in a negotiating uh, scene, you know, you can't be defensive or pushy because people are automatically going to sense that and they're going to be like, you know, they're going to start pushing you away. you got to be a people person. Now, imagine the same scenario where you go up to your friend's house and the dog's like super happy, tongue's hanging out. His butt is like going like from left to right. You know those little the butts when they're waggling your tail like the dog's butt goes like that, right? It's so funny. And like you're just like, oh, this is a cool dog. You got a cool dog here. You want to play with him, right? You want to be like, hey, what's going on, brother? And, and like play with the dog. So that's how you have to be. That's the presence. That's the aura you have to give out when you meet people, all right? And it doesn't matter what mode they're in. They could be in a defensive mode or skeptical or whatever but as long as you right portray and give out the vibes of that cool person confident cool confident friendly the vibes are going to start to transfer to people and they're going to start to like you whether they like it or not they're going to start to feel comfortable they're going to start to trust you they're going to start to like you because they're like wow this guy is super relaxed he seems honest he seems really cool. He's laid back. He's not pushy. And that makes people like you even more. Do you, are you getting this so far? Is it making sense? And that is when you, as the seller, if you're selling the car, you assume the sale. And what I mean by assuming the sale is say that, yeah, so, you know, when you when you buy it, you could say little, you could throw little words in the sentence. Say like, yeah, you know, your, your wife is going to love if If the buyer comes in saying he's looking to get the car for his wife, you can say, you could spit little sentences out that say something like, yeah, your wife, she's going to love this when she drives it. Or, you know, she's this is this will be perfect for her, you know, because because they might give you little hints and say, yeah, we're looking for a van. We need a little bit more space for the kids. You know, we got another kid. Um, and, and if you just throw in little words, they're going to start to imagine. 
you know, they're going to start to say, oh, yeah, my wife really might like this, you know. So it's really important to just be cool, calm, friendly, non-pushy, confident, and, and that's what sells. And it's the same thing. It works with negotiating when you're buying or when you're selling. So you have to start developing your magical persona. And it all comes down to basically having an interest in others. Okay? You start the conversation. You have an interest in them. So say, why, you know, what are you looking to buy the car for? You know, oh yeah, well, you know, I just I'm looking for something smaller. I want to get a two-seater, you know, a little bit more fun. You know, and, and, and that's how you just get into the country. Just be cool about it and just be have an interest in them and they'll start to like you automatically. And that's how, you know, you that's how it just starts to just get on a snowball effect when you're talking to people. And that's how you can make selling a lot more easier. And that's how it works. All right. So I just wanted to kind of talk to you about that today. Just try to think when you get into a a conversation with anybody practice on your family just like Joe says practice on friends but I think it's even more important to practice on strangers because your friends kind of already know you you know your family knows you so the ice is already broken right so you really don't have to it's more toward practicing toward new people that you meet try to have a genuine interest in other people when you meet them so you know when you're going to go look at a car to buy it uh, or when you're selling a car, same thing. Um, even if you're not working on selling a car, okay? Work on selling yourself, you know? Th- and that's actually the number one step is to sell yourself first, okay? Because if you're not sold on the car, if you don't believe it's a good deal, that it's a good ride, the guy's getting a good deal, it's going to be harder for you to sell. But if you truly believe this is a great car, somebody who buys this is really going to like it. You know, it's got low mileage or it's been maintained very well. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, that's exactly what people are going to be buying, your confidence. Uh, A tip I use is to talk to them like they were my family. Exactly, Mega. That's what I'm saying here. You want to talk to them like they're a friend. Talk to them like it's you're super cool. And that's just doing that is going to make a huge difference. Start practicing this the next time you meet somebody new, okay? And it doesn't have to be when you're selling a car. Just practice when you're meeting, say you went to a carnival and you met somebody at a carnival or anywhere. Have a genuine interest and ask questions about them first. You'll notice that they they will not stop talking. And, And just to hit the point home, I was on the plane flight getting over here there's a vietnamese girl sitting next to me she was we i found out she was my age she was 35 i'm 34 and um i was in the middle seat of the plane i like to always sit on the aisles because if i have to get out and take a piss and stretch i could just so i'm always an aisle seater unless i'm with my family then we'll switch between the window so i can look out look out the window once in a while but um so it was a five five row it was two five and two in the plane i was in the in the middle on the very left aisle and there was an empty seat next to me, the Vietnamese girl, an empty seat, and another guy sitting. So we had pretty much, it was pretty roomy, right? So like all the way, you know, 10 hours in, um, I started talking to the girl because she woke up. She was kind of sleeping most of the way. So we started talking and I had a genuine interest in her. And literally, she would not shut up talking for like two hours. Like I was getting tired of talking to her, but she wouldn't stop sharing her life with me. She took out her phone, started sharing me pictures of her kids, her business. She, she had a nail salon business and she's told me she's going to open up a, a Vietnamese food store next year and this and that. She wanted my name so she can get me on Facebook. So we traded, you know, stuff on Facebook and all that. And she just like loved me, you know, and I was very interested in her. But at that point, I was like starting to get a little headache because I'm like flying for so long. It's just I hate it, you know. But she had, you know, I had a genuine interest in her and she was like willing to share. She wanted to, she wants to be my friend. She's like, next time you come back to Texas, let's meet up our families. Let's have a barbecue or, you know, she wants to be my friend. But it's just crazy. And that's how you could make new friends like, 
like nothing. You make friends easy if you have a genuine interest. And I wasn't always like that. You know, I was kind of like that. But in high school and college, I wasn't really as open as I am now. But now I understand that in this life, in this game, in this the, the game of life is all about networks. And I probably said this before. Did I sell her a car? <laughs> no. I probably said this before, but, you know, rich people build networks, poor people look for a job. So just think about that, you know, the more connections and networks you have with other people is by, you know, being a attractive, I wouldn't say you'd have to be charismatic, but outgoing and interested in other people, you're going to make a lot more friends, you're going to make a lot more connections, and it goes into your car selling business because you're going to meet tow truck people, you're going to meet all kinds of body shop people, mechanics, every every avenue of this plays the people game. So the friendly you are to people, the more cooler you are, the more it's going to benefit you. All right? So let's close it out for that. You guys, did you guys enjoy this little mini session today? I hope it kind of um, inspired you, gave you a little paradigm shift, a way of thinking differently today, tonight. Think about it tonight and tomorrow start basically playing a genuine interest in somebody that you don't know. Test it out and just be cool with them and see how it changes your life because it will you'll start to get more connections. People will start liking you. And this is this is the whole strategy of influence. If you want to influence people, that's what you do. Basically, you start caring for them first. You have an interest in them and that's it. You guys liking this so far? Give me, type in here quickly and give me some feedback if you guys like this. And then we're going to get into some quick Q&A for everybody for the next 10, 15 minutes. I'll handle some of your Q&A. And um, I got to go, I got to get some work done online. And I also have to go back to the hospital to, I'm going to spend a couple of hours with my kid. I haven't seen her in a month. She was like super shocked to see me when I went to the hospital last night. Like I flew in and we went straight to the hospital. And uh, I went to go see her. She's like, dad. <laughs> ah, all right. Excellent, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're the man. Yo, Jose. Better late than never. Liking the advice for sure, Doug. Okay, awesome. So, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Be sure to like the video today, too. The channel. Like it. All right. So, any questions you guys have, start typing them in. I know Mega had one. I will go back um, at the very top and I'll answer Mega's really quickly because I know it was a pretty long one. Okay. Mega. Uh, Tony, there's a 2002 Jeep Grand, Grand, <laughs> Jeep Grand Cherokee on Craigslist for 500 bucks. It needs a fuel pump but has 213,000 miles. There's other, others on Craigslist uh, with 150,000 miles asking 35. What would be a good price to sell mine for? I think you could probably 2002 Jeep. You probably get 25, 27 for it, 28 maybe, depending on the condition. Yeah, it has a little high mileage, but it, it also is going to depend on how you write your ad and also how how in demand that truck is. If you did the market research and searched that Grand Cherokees in your area, you know, you, you just said they're asking about 3,500, but what are the conditions of them? Are, are a lot of them beat up or kind of get more info on that? But I think for 500, you if they're asking 500, you could probably get it for 350. If you go there cash and be like, dude, I got 350 cash, man. And if they want four, then give them four. You still get it for five, 400. Uh, you know, I know you. 400 is a given. You'll definitely get it. If they're asking five, you'll get four. If not, 450. Fine, right? But I would start off at 350 cash and then move up to four. Um, fuel pump, probably a hundred bucks. If you're going to do it yourself, you're going to make some money that way. If you're going to have somebody else do it, you may be investing a little bit more, but again, they're saying it's the fuel pump. It might be something else. It might not be the fuel pump. So you just have to be certain on that. You have to be certain on what the repairs are. If you're certain on the repairs and you know that that's the job, you know, that that's the only issue, 
then it's basically money in the bank and it's, you could do it. You do the deal, right? Because you know, you know. So that's, uh, that's my advice for you. All right. I don't think, I think that it's a no brainer if you know it's the fuel pump and if you know you can get it fixed with the parts and repaired for 200 and if you know you can get the car for 400 so you're going to be in it 600 maybe right and you and if you could get 25 for it i mean look at the profit you're going to make on it and that's just one little flip that you did quick right hope that makes sense okay um next n3x legend gaming says what's your name brother put some names in here you should, you should start off like, hey, Tony, my name is this. Because sometimes I can't read your screen names, guys. Like, I don't know what it is. And I, I would prefer to call you by name, man. How would you start recommending someone that uh, is under 18 flipping cars? You want to know my recommendation? Stop being a little bitch and just do it. Listen, I was buying and selling mopeds at 13 years old. Okay, mopeds. 50cc motor motorcycles Caden what's up Caden from Michigan anyway Caden by the time I was 18 I was flipping cars um, 15 I sold my first car as long as you have your license that's all you really need because you could buy a car if you're if you have a license so I mean I don't see where your hurdle is if you want to kind of get uh, get to me a little bit on what the obstacle is I mean, I don't know what you're trying to get. How would you recommend someone that's under 18? So what are you, 17 or 16? Right? Uh, Carlos, New Orleans. How you guys doing out there with the flood? I, I heard you guys got some flood issues out there. I know some people were in some deep shit out there. Carlos, everything okay? First time. Gene, what's up? Gene, how you doing, man? Houston, Texas. Uh, I don't have money at the moment. I'm so sick. You know what? The stream just cut out for a second. Stream resumed. That was weird. Like, I didn't touch anything, and the stream just cut. If everybody's here, just type in. Like, I'm starting to get you guys now. Well, if, you know, Caden, I, I had a VIP member. He was 16 years old. He borrowed 1500 from his stepdad. Okay, his stepdad lent him 1500 bucks. He bought and sold the truck, right? He sold it for $25. He made $2,500 on the deal, profit. He paid his dad back the fifteen, dollars and he had $1,000 in profit on his own to start doing his flipping. And he was successful ever since. So even if you don't have money, if you learn the strategies and you know what you're doing, right, you could borrow money from somebody and just get the deal done. You know, there's no way you're going to lose money flipping cars unless you buy the wrong deal, right? So as long as you're certain on getting a deal, it's money in the bank, right? It's money. It's just like buying a house. It's like anything. It's easier than buying a house. As long as you you know that this car is a deal, it's selling for $4,500 all over the place, but you know you can get it for twenty five dollars or twenty eight. dollars it's it's the gap. You're the middleman, right? You're making that profit. Age is a number. Exactly. Don't let your age be an obstacle. Okay. And you know, I have no idea what people were thinking when they were buying cars at me from me when I was 15, 16, 17 years old. I mean, I look young now, but when I was that age, I probably looked like I was freaking 10 years old when I was 16, 17, 18. And I was selling freaking cars at that age. I was selling car. I sold my first car, 15 years old, by myself. My stepfather's 1989 Honda Accord two door. By myself in Hawaii at that time, 15 years ago, you could get your license and be on the road at 14 and a half. Uh, no, 14 and nine months. 15, you could have your your freaking license in your pocket. So I was on the road, 15 years old. I sold that car at 15 at some shopping center. By myself, after the deal, I called my mom, pay phone, right? I didn't have a cell phone those times. I said, mom, can you come pick me up? I sold the car. Just sell the freaking car. You know you got the title. As long as it's signed off by your parents or whoever owns the car, whoever's buying, you make sure they
Yo. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, you guys with me? You guys with me? Head yeah, back. Are we back? Are we back? Are we back? Okay. Dude, I don't know what's wrong with my internet today over here. Seems like we're back. Great, 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 great. All right, so watch the replay for all of you guys that had some experience, some choppiness, or came in late. Watch the replay. I don't know why this is happening like this today. It, it looks like my internet jumped to some free network, but it looks like we're on. Sorry about that. Lower P. <clears throat> okay. Doug says, so I'm going to sell one of my personal cars for my starting seed money, 2001 Mustang. It should be worth every bit of 25 to 300. Should I be concerned about getting top dollar for it? <clears throat> well, I would try to get as much as you can, okay? What's the blue book, number one? Uh, and always list it at retail before you, you put in your asking price. And I talk about this in the F1 course as well. So if you guys are non-members of my F1 program, I strongly urge you to check it out, invest in yourself, learn the strategies that you need, and and because in the F1 program, I, I go over every little detail so you guys get it. I embed it in your brain so you know that you're going to make money on your deals. So check that out if you have time later on today. I'll just put the URL here quickly. Uh, this way you could check it out. Um, All right, I'm just gonna put this in here for some of you guys uh, who are interested in checking out F1. If not, no big deal. It's not for everybody. Okay, uh, let's see. So that's what I would do. So Jose says, went to go look at a truck for sale today. Talked to talked the guy down 500 bucks, but didn't want to buy it. Didn't want to buy it because the truck was too expensive for me. Well, you know. Jose, at least you went out there and at least you took action and at least you negotiated. So I got to give you props for that, man. I got to give you props for that. Don't blow your seed money. Um, Joe says, yeah, it's always important to to uh, to save your money. It's, it's good now. Okay, we're back. Okay. What's up, Eugene from Georgia? Freezing, but get your point, Tony. Going to save up, hopefully... Uh, around December once football is over. I do plan on becoming a VIP member for sure. Buying for an insurance auction, is this a good idea out of state? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, but you need to know what you're buying. Okay? You need to know what you're buying. If you know how to gauge deals and you know what you're buying, then I think auctions are a great place. And Anthony, aren't you an F1 member? You're an F1 member, right? Because I cover, I talk about all of that. Listen to my audios. I have the complete 13 chapters on audio. Go through my audios and really listen to them. Okay, it's important. I talk about some really, really important things in my audio book. Um, and, you know, I got the manual. Here, this is the product. If you're not a member of that, join, become a member. Because we have the step-by-step -step booklet that teaches you exactly everything you need. And in the audio book, I go over all the chapters. And I also add in true stories and scenarios. I expand upon them. Okay? So that's where you're going to get all the info. The cheaper one, I don't know what you're talking about. The uh, Maybe you got it on sale. Okay, the audio book is inside of the members area. There's an audio section. So look out for the audio section. It's in the F1 members area. So log in again after you get off tonight and check it out. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, Joe Wolf. What matters is Kelly Blue Book, but more importantly, what the market is for that car in your area. Exactly. And that's what I say all the time, right? And, you know, the other cool thing about your market is sometimes people 
don't know what they have. So you could score deals. You know, you'll get these people who have a car that's sitting, an old lady or an old guy, he just wants to get rid of a car. He doesn't know what the car is worth. But, and then you go and you scoop it up quick, you know what the car is worth, and you flip it. And also, Kelly Blue Book isn't always accurate, right? Like in Hawaii, the Toyota trucks sell like crazy. Blue Book might be five grand, but people are selling them for seven, eight, nine thousand dollars and they're getting it, right? It depends on the market, okay? And that's where you can scoop because people, they look on Kelly Blue Book, says their truck is worth five grand. They list it for five grand. Somebody who knows the game of buying and selling like we do, we're like, holy shit, that's a deal. I could sell this thing for 6,500 tomorrow, right? You go, you pick up the deal. He's asking five. Maybe you get it for 45. You flip it for 65 within the next couple of days. That's how easy it is. And there are deals like that all day long. You just got to be on it. Keep looking. How hungry are you, right? How hungry are you? Do you want to make money? Or do you want to just sit around and make excuses and wish and just say, oh, I wish I could buy and sell or oh, I'm not a salesman or there's too many guys out there doing it or that's the scarcity mindset, guys. Okay, think abundance, think opportunity because the world is moving, man. It's either you or the next guy. It's either you or the next guy that's going to make that buck. Somebody's going to make it, right? It's there. See, even Derek, look at Derek. I've always had good lucks with Jeeps. So Derek, you found your little niche. That's awesome. And that's what I talk about. If you find your little niche, stick with your niche as well. But don't just strictly stick to that. It'd be good to, to do that, of course. Like me, I always played around with the Miatas. I used to get a lot of Miatas. Sell a lot of Miatas. Because in Hawaii, top down, I did a couple in Texas. People like that, right? And when you're getting a sports car, you always want to get five-speed or six-speed, whatever. People don't like automatic, right? The majority, when somebody's buying a sports car, they want five speed, right? So why are you gonna get a, an automatic? Like I, I wouldn't even look at any automatic sports cars, right? Maybe Mustang, some people want automatic, but even, you know, people people want the stick if they're getting a sports car, right? So think like that as well. Um, what's up, Tony? Patrick, first time, what's up? Derek, Doug, uh, you don't get anywhere without taking chances, absolutely. I've had many successes with Mazdas. I know them forward and back, and they sell great. Yup, just like, I mean, mostly all Asian cars sell really, really well. So quickly, we're going to close this off in a bit. Um, I just want to know who got in here by... I did send out an email. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't send it out earlier because I was at the hospital. There's no internet connection there. I wanted to get something out earlier. So... Frozen. Yeah, it looks like we'll be back. What's your favorite and least favorite part about flipping cars? Well, I think my favorite part is searching and getting the deal. Actually getting the deal. Um, and knowing that you really got a good deal. My least favorite is actually having to go on the, get on the road and go look at them. You know, that's like the hustle part. When you're scheduling three, four cars a day, uh, just checking out deals. But once you get the car, you know, it's on. You're just basically, you're in a, once you got the deal, it's just money in the bank, right? So that's probably my least favorite is to go look at them. But that's, I mean, it's all part of the game, you know, it's all part of the game. So that's about it. So Hopefully email, some people got in by email, some people notification. Um, our Grand Prix autos, good sellers, I've had to lower it twice. You know, American cars, I'm not too fond of too many American. I don't buy and sell a lot of American cars. You know, I've sold a, a bunch of Pontiacs, Grand Prix, uh, you know, maybe 10 of them through my career not a lot maybe 10 10 15 but i don't i don't go for pontiacs that much american cars you know if i go american they're probably chevy trucks uh ford trucks that's pretty much it you know other than that i like to stick with uh with cars 
you know, sedans, Asian sedans, Hondas, Mazdas, Toyotas, Nissans, Kias, Hyundais. Uh, I actually got on by luck. I think it's my email though. And YouTube sends me notifications when the episode episode is uploaded. Uh, not when you're live, come on for some reason. That's really weird. When you're on your mobile, there's a little notification bell. If you click that, it'll notify you when we go live on YouTube. Yeah, Grand, Grand Prix, you know, not that much. Honda Accords. Yes, 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 yes. Sold my chainsaw today, 150 in my pocket. Awesome. That's what I'm talking about, making money. Do, do whatever you can to make money. You know, whatever you can, of course, legally, ethically, right? As long as we don't hurt nobody. How can one get a notice? Joe, I think, I mean, on YouTube, there is a, if you're on mobile, there's a little bell on my channel. If you click that, it, it'll allow notifications. So when we go live. All right. So I hope everybody enjoyed today. I hope you guys got some takeaways on the beginning first part of 15 minutes of this uh, episode today about your magic persona, your personality, and how to attract more people and build your network and be likable because it's very, very important when you're buying and selling, negotiating, and uh, and making deals. Absolutely, right? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and close it off in just a bit. Here is the URL for my F1 program. Definitely invest in yourself. Learn all, all that you can Learn from other people's mistakes, other people's experience. This way it'll shortcut your learning curve. And that's the smartest way to get ahead of people quicker. You know, like me. Dude, I, I invest in myself immensely. Immensely. Okay, I just did my speech at Harvard a couple of weeks ago. You know, I'm investing in programs. You, you guys would, would not believe how much I invest in myself in alternative education. You know, hey, yeah, I, I dropped out of high school. I got my GED. Yeah, I didn't continue and finish college because I didn't want to take typing class and I didn't want to do speech class. I dropped out of college, right? I was this close to getting my associates. Um, but that haven't, it hasn't stopped me from continuing my learning, right? Continuing learning how to sell and how to deal with people on how to build an online business, on how to do my car flipping, on how to invest in real estate. I continually learn, I buy audio books, I buy books every month. I must buy five to 10 books a month, just books, right? And I try to read 20 to 30, 40 pages a day, try to. Um, I'm in the process of creating my brand new book, which I'm gonna share with you, hopefully in the next two months. I just got it back from my editor, um, now I have to go through it and, and kind of go through my the whole book and take out what I don't want, add in what I want, get it back to them. We just got to go back to the, the editing process. And uh, I, I can't wait to share that with you. And that is basically uh, a course in teaching you how to build an online business. How many of you guys would be interested in that? How many of you guys in here would be interested to build an online business where you could set stuff up online and make money while you sleep. And it's not a freaking dream and it's not a scam. And this is how I make money as well. I do my car stuff. I'm invested in real estate. I make money online. I'm, I'm partners with other people in some businesses, right? I don't, you know, obviously not every, I don't tell everybody everything that I do. I'm involved in a lot of things, right? And this is just one of them, right? And you know, you probably heard it in my other videos, but I like to say this. The average millionaire has seven streams of income. Think about that. The average millionaire has seven streams of income. So they're making money through their real estate, through their stocks, through their businesses, and they have more than one business that's producing cash flow, right? They're partnered with other people, right? They have an online business. They have books for sale, right? They're doing all this stuff. Show me the book. Jose, it's in my process of being edited right now. Um, I got it back from the editor, so what I'm gonna be doing today is after I get off with you guys, I gotta do some online work, then I gotta go to the hospital, and there's no internet connection, so I'm gonna hang out with my daughter in the hospital today. She's not. She's gonna get out tomorrow. And I'm just gonna be offline working on my book while she's gonna be doing some artwork or whatever. So um, 
My book's going to be done, I would say, within the next eight weeks. Hopefully, I've been working on it for the past two and a half, three months. So it takes time to actually publish a book. It's going to be a physical book that you guys are going to be able to get. And I can't wait for you to get it and read it and just check it out. It's going to be freaking, it's game changing, game changing. I'm super excited about this book, man. You guys don't know. Um, and I hope it opens your, your eye. Can I get a quick poll here? How old is everybody on here? Because I'm doing a lot of research on, you know, Generation X, the Millennials, the Generation, the Millennials. We, people born from 1979 to 2000, we are the Millennials, our age group. I just, give me an idea. How old are you guys on here? Just so I get an idea. 16, 33, Patrick's 33. Peter, 29, Doug, 41, Scott, 33, Joe, 72. Awesome. Joe, 56, Derek, 23, Anthony, 44. So, Joe, Joe, you are the, the baby. You are, not, you're not the baby boomer. You're generation, you're baby boomer. Uh, well, you're just on the cusp of that. Joe, you are generation X. Derek, you are the millennial Anthony, you are Generation X. Eugene, you are uh, Generation X. Jose, you're Generation X. You're the guys right before us. Patrick, Joe72. Justin, I would say you're right on the edge of Generation X and the Millennials. Millennials are 35, 36 at latest. Tim, 55. Um, so, you know, we vast, vast rage in here. Vast range of, of ages in here, 44, 41. I just turned 34, guys, last month. My wife just turned 30 four days ago. So we are getting old. We're getting old, right? And not just us. I mean, even Joe. Joe, in here, you're 72, right? My godfather is 78 now, and he's getting into real estate investing heavily. And what prompted him to get into this is because of the Obama health care law where if something happens to you at, the, at his age, basically they, they don't fund you, right? If you're not, it's basically legal genocide. They don't have to, they could, you could just sit in the hospital and die. He got so pissed off about that. He's in the process of buying and selling two homes right now. I can't believe what he's been able to do in the past six months. He spent $30,000 in a real estate course, okay? He's been going to these conferences, and now he has two deals under his belt. He's going to make fifty grand on one deal and about sixty grand on another deal in Texas, and he's 78 years old. And this is my godfather that we did the godfather project on. Any of you guys see that uh, in my auto body course? I called it the godfather project. Well, there's going to be part two because he just backed up his Subaru Outback and he hit a mailbox. So I told him when we get back, we're going to be doing a, a whole series on that. Show you exactly how to get that done. You're as only as old as you admit to. So, I mean, my father was 72 when he passed away. You know, he always said, you know, in his mind, he felt like he was 35. You know, it's, it's all a mindset. And he looked great, too. RIP mailbox. He looked great. So... Guys, we're not getting younger. Today is the youngest we will ever be. Think about that. Today is the youngest we will ever be. Okay? So think about your family. Think about your kids. Think about why you're doing this. And start taking action today. Take action on how you can get into the game, how you can start saving money, how you can start making more money, how you can start investing the pools of cash that you save, right? So buying and selling cars is awesome. You're going to make thousands of dollars per month if you want to, easily. What you do with that money is going to ultimately decide what happens to your financial future, right? Are you going to take that money or are you going to blow it, right? Or are you going to take that money and are you going to save 50 to 80% of it, Right? Are you going to save some of that to invest in something else, another vehicle that's going to make you more money? That's where the power comes in, okay? Is if you take this, this leverage 
If you take this new skill set that you have of making money flipping cars to profit, you save that money and then you invest that money, okay, to make more money, okay? That's where, of course, you're gonna need to you're gonna need to use some of that money to pay off expenses, pay off some of your debt. Absolutely, that's gonna make you feel better, right? And that's important as well. So think about this, guys. I hope you enjoyed my talk today. I can't wait to see you on next week again. Same time next week, um, I will be on again. I'm going to be in Japan for about three weeks, okay? And then I head back to Texas, and we'll be doing live Q&A from Texas. Here is the F1 formula if you guys are interested in investing in yourself. I promise you, you're going to make back 20 times your investment with that. Um, plus, once you go through the course, you're going to be on my page even more, right? The people who, who get more out of my course is the people who take my course and meet up with me live like this. This way, you go through my program, you know what the hell I'm talking about, right? And I can guide you even further to get it to step up on the ladder, okay? Thank you, Joe, appreciate it. Patrick, awesome, Jose, thank you so much. You, you love the Godfather show. Um, Eugene, can your wife talk to my wife to tell her that this works? It will take time to, it takes time not all make money right away. Of course it takes a little bit of time. You gotta invest yourself. You gotta know what you're doing. Of course it works. <laughs> My wife is gone. She went to the hospital. <laughs> you're welcome everybody. Awesome guys. I'll be here next week, Eugene says. Patrick, thank you as well. Thank you for getting on. Can't wait to become a member. Doug, thank you so much. Hey, invest in yourself, brother. It's only gonna help you. And I'm telling you, the, the, Dude, I am char you know, it's peanuts. The money that you're investing in this program, I should be charging at least five hundred to a thousand dollars of what I'm providing here. But I don't you know, I don't want to charge that much. I want people to be able to get in easily and, and really just take it to heart and put the program to use because it will work. I spend tens tens of thousands of dollars on programs and opportunities. Justin, thank you, brother. Scott, thank you. I appreciate it. I will be on next week, same time. Um, if you guys have any questions, email them to support or put them in here to cover for next week. And I'll just answer this last question from X Eon 001. I have a Honda Civic, uh, great value for 200. Learn how to do body work. Can't wait to use your tips to learn auto body work and begin flipping cars. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We've been on here much longer than I wanted to be, but, uh, I'm glad everybody got something out of it. Have a good night. Okay, people. Have a good night. Keep being positive. Keep being positive. And, uh, and keep investing in yourself. And hang around the right people. And have a genuine interest in other people. All right? Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Also, if you want to get the free book, go to this URL for the free book. Good night, guys. Cheers. Peace out. Peace.